Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, another Sudoku video today. Now, in our Patreon content, we of course have Grockle's Heatwave, the uh, Sudoku hunt that has been getting loads of entries and praise, frankly, from everybody who's a who's had a go at it. So do join Patreon if you haven't already and have a go at that. It's a fantastic hunt. We are giving until the 20th of the month. So still 11 more days for uh, correct entries and do feel free to enter it. It's it's There'll be a piece of merchandise for whoever we pick out as the winner. Um, and what else have we got going on? Well, there's just all our usual stuff on the channel. There are all our usual apps available on the links under the video. We've got um, the Discord community still thriving like crazy. We must have a new podcast episode to bring out soon. Fantastic stuff. Always, always looking to entertain you with Sudoku. And today, Simon has asked me to have a go at this puzzle by Zombie Hunter. Um, Simon's done a puzzle by Zombie Hunter before. I don't think I have on the channel. So first for me and look forward to it i don't know exactly why he's asked me to do it there is a title which is the french connection with the t replaced by a seven the french connection is that movie with the car chase um has there been a remake with a seven in it i don't know or is the seven relevant to the film or a car chase? i don't know i don't know what's going on anyway we will see what we find as we go along um and the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow sum up to the number in the circle. Uh, in cages, digits sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So that's it. Arrow and killer Sudoku. We've got one given eight. Very generous of Zombie Hunter there. Um, do give it a try on the link under the video. And I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. Um, right. Got an interesting central box, but let's look first at these two 15 cages. Okay, that's nice. We They must contain 6, 9 in one case and 8, 7 in the other. Now, perhaps the more salient point is that those two 15s obviously add up to 30. And this is where I get to let you in on the secret that a full row of a Sudoku grid, just like a column or a box, must add up to 45 every single time, because that's the sum of the numbers 1 to 9. Right, so if we add up this row to 45 and we subtract the 15 cages, we're left with 15. And that is represented by one pair of digits that add to the circle, the circle, and another pair of digits that add to the circle. And that means the circle must be a third of 15. So that is a five. And then the digits on the arrows are a pair that is one, four, and a pair that is two, three, but we don't know the order. So that's where we start in this puzzle. That is possibly where the easy deductions completely finish. Right, let's have a look at this central box. Ah, if these three circles were 9, 8, 7, then for each one, a circle plus an arrow, 9, nine, nine plus 8 plus 7 is 24, plus an arrow for each is 48. Then we could subtract the box of 45, and does that leave us with three made up of a 2 and a 1 on the arrow tips? It doesn't. Right, sorry doesn't because this circle has two arrows coming from it so if that was a nine i'm making these maximum because that's what i was doing before so we'd have a nine and those two would each add up to nine so we're up to 27 eight and a pair adding up to eight is another 16 is 43 seven and a pair adding up to seven is 14 that's 57, then these can add up to 12, and that's far less helpful. I mean, there's lots of degrees of freedom around that. I could reduce this to an 8, 7, even a 6, and yeah, that's not what we do next. Can we use, oops, sorry, can we use this arrow, this circle and its two arrows? 
Not really. These look fairly significant, these sort of N-shaped arrows in boxes one, three, seven, and nine. What are they doing? Maybe there's a whole parity play on the whole grid. Since that's even and those are odd, then these must add up to an even number. These to an even number. So I'm using the number 45. If this this group of four cells must be even because it's whatever numbers in the circle and three numbers that add, add up to that same x. So this is 2x, so it must be even. Say it was a 7 in there. So these add up to 14, plus 15 is 29. Then these three add up to 16. And we'll always find that must be even because we're starting with an odd number of 45, taking off an odd number of 15, removing another even number, we must be left with even there. So again, 45 minus even there, even there, leaves odd down here, plus that even, plus that even, means this is even, um, and is 2, 4, or 6. Suppose we can do the same thing over here, but we're going to end up with a... Oh, well, it's interesting. Maybe we are going to end up with a total for this pair. Let's see what this does. Even there plus odd there. It's the same deal as over here. So those are even. That's even. This group is odd. Plus even there means that this pair ends up being even. And that means that this group of cells... You've got even there, even there, a pair that add up to an even number there, even though they could both be odd, probably are. This group has to add up to an odd number. It's also a number that's divisible by three because it's that equals the same as that equals the same as that, and you add the three together. So. It's an odd number that's divisible by 3. This has to be odd as a result. Can't be 3, because they both have to be 2, 1 on the arrow. It can't be 5, because that's up here. So it's 7 or 9. And what does that mean for these two? Can these be odd? No, sorry, can they be even digits? If that was two, could this be four and six? Then these would be nine, one, seven, five, and three, which add up to 25, which is not divisible by three. No, these are both odd numbers here. I'm using our traditional odd is orange and blue is even, which somehow Simon and I both agree on, which is unusual. So those are odd numbers. Is that? I mean, I'm sort of beginning to back off and think it doesn't help at all. Actually, yes, I could have known that because whether this is nine or seven, it's odd. And each of these pairs must be one even number and one odd number. I don't think I've actually advanced very far here. I don't think I'm really probably going to end up in a full parity shading exercise. That seems unlikely. On the other hand, I don't know. What we do look at here. Now if we've been given this 8, that can't be an 8 pair. Say that was 9, 18, 26. Doesn't really help. 7 here, 14, 22. No, it's easy to fill those up with another 23. Um, just trying to look at maxima and minima. I don't think I can use these because 
although I know that those add up to even numbers, therefore that group of three is adds up to an odd number. I don't think that tells me anything about this. This could still be even with one even and one odd on its pins. Crumbs, I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh. Is there something about these being four two by twos? Is this some sort of system of hell thing? Right. What set theory, rows and columns, would leave those behind? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's look at rows two and three, rows seven and eight, and I will color them green. And let's look at columns two, sorry, columns three, four, five, six, and seven, and I'll make them purple. Okay, let's get rid of the uh, parity shading. We'll, we'll come back to that if we need to. Right. Now we know that these four green rows contain four sets of the digits one to nine, not just that they add up to 180, but that they specifically contain four sets of the digits one to nine, because that is the definition of a Sudoku row. Yes, we know that these columns, um, I've just realized purple is a hideous color because it covers the arrows when, when we're not on it. So let's go, oh, yellow doesn't work with green. Right, hang on a second. Let me just think about making those. No, that's not good. Okay, I'm gonna try it with yellow and blue because I can still see the arrows in this just about. Um, right. The blue rows are four sets of the digits one to nine. The yellow columns are five sets of the digits one to nine. So those two shaded areas, blue and yellow, contain the same digits, but yellow has one extra of the digits one to nine. And that is that group of yellow cells is one set of the digits one to nine. So I'm going to remove them from this equation. And now blue and yellow are exactly the same digits. Let's remove the digits that are both blue and yellow, the kind of difficult to see double colored ones there. And still, this is it, still the blue and yellow cells have to now be the same digits because we had exactly the same sets. We removed one set of one to nine from the one that had five sets of one to nine, so we had exactly the same. Then we've removed 20 digits that are clearly exactly the same, whether they're blue or yellow, those ones. And now we're left with, this is, yeah, this is interesting, with these four two by two blue areas and these yellow areas and we know the totals of some of the yellow areas this is important we know that that's 12 that's 10 this group one two three four five adds up to 15. so 15 plus 12 plus 10 37 plus this yellow area must equal an even number because this is Four times all of these. Oh, what? Is it, have I just found a complicated way of working out that that's odd again? Ten, twenty-two, thirty-seven. Right. So this is uh, this slot either adds up to twenty-seven or to twenty-one. So we're on either fifty-eight or sixty-four. 
divide that by two and you get the total of these circles. So they either add up to 29 or 32. 32 is quite big. Yes. 32 is quite big. The only way you could do 32 would be using repeat numbers because 9876 only adds up to 30. Now, what number would you have to repeat? Could you do it with two repeat eights? Yes, you could. 8897. Oh, bother. I was wondering if we were going to be able to prove you couldn't do it with repeat nines. Oh, hang on, look. Yeah, this is lovely. Right, let's now postulate that there are repeat nines in the blue. And I think I'm going to be able to demonstrate that there aren't. So if there were repeat nines in the blue, either in those two cells or in those two cells, and it would have to be like that because of the way that these four see each other apart from the diagonals. That would be the only way to get two nines into those cells and get a real jump start on making them add up to 32 or even, uh, I've forgotten, 26. Is it 26? I'm going to do the whole maths again. Right, yellow adds up to 22, 37, plus, if that's a 7, 21, 68, 58, 29 they add up to if it's a 7, and 32 if it's a 9. Sorry, 29 and 32. Okay. So what I'm trying to prove is that these two don't have two nines because if they did, there'd have to be two nines in the yellow. Only nine can't appear in that cage because of the 10 number. So there could be one in column seven and one in row nine, but the one in row nine would have to be here. And if you put a 9 in that 12 cage, where are you going to put a 9 in row 7? You can never put one on an arrow, which rules out all of those. If you've got a 9 here, you can't put one there. And if you've got a 9 here, you can't put one there. So there'd be nowhere to put a 9 in row 7. So that doesn't prove there's no 9 in this cell. It proves there's not two 9s in yellow. Therefore, you can't have two 9s in blue. Now we've got to make up a total of either 29 or 32, not using two nines. Now, to do 32, we could do it with 8, 8, 9, 7. Now, clearly this can't be 8 because of that. So we'd have 8 in those two cells. Now we'd need to get two 8s into the yellow cells. And since you can't put one in row 9 because of this, given eight. That's what it's here for. And you can't put one in there. You cannot get two yellow eights. So you can only have a maximum. In fact, you can only have one nine or eight in the blue cells at all. That's going to be right because we proved you can't have two nines. If you have a nine or eight in this row, it's a single nine there. Oh, could we have an 8 here as well as a 9 there? We can't have an 8 here. Maybe we can. I'm sorry, I hadn't figured that out. Um, can there be a 9 here and an 8 here? Ah, oh, now, what did we say? If this was a 9, 27, 39, 49, I'm doing the maths again, 64. These two have to add up to 32, but they can't have two nines or two eights. That's impossible. This is a seven, which is presumably the seven from the French Connection title. Still don't know if there was a remake with that title in it. Anyway, that's now a seven. These 
21, 33, 43, 58. These four cells add up to 29. Now, there is no 9 or 8 in this row. There can be a 9 or 8 in this 12 cage, but there can only be one. So we've got a maximum 1, 9 or 8 here. Now, if we take whatever our maximum total, 9 plus 7 plus 7 plus 6, is 29, which is exactly the number we need. That is what these are made up of. Two sevens, a six and a nine. That is complicated. I hope you have followed what I'm doing there. It took this kind of set theory, yellow equals blue, to start with. And then, because this is limited, because the number of nines and eights we can get into yellow are limited, we are down to this arrangement now. We know that there is a 9. It has to be a 9 somewhere in yellow. It can't be in this row. It's got to be in this cage. That's a 9 to 1 cage. That's not 1 or 2, so that's not 3 or 4. Um, and there are two 7s here. So then we have to get two 7s into yellow. We've got one in this row. The other one's going to be in this cage, and that's also with a 2 and a 1. Oh, this is very, very clever, I have to say. Um, right. So we've got the two sevens into the cage. We also need to get a six into the yellow. So one of these is a one-six pair. The one can't be in column three or seven. So one of these is a one sitting beside a six. So that even digits, not six. Um, so nine in this row is now going to be in one of these two cells. And that's not a nine. But it could be a six. Sevens are going to be diagonally opposite, or it could be a seven. Um, Next, and that was this. Um, right, next. Can I go back to this? Ah, right. These circles here have arrows which now can't include a one or a two anywhere. So they have to be at least. Ah, right. Look at this one to start with. It can't add up to a 9, but it's got to add up to at least 7 in the circle because they both have to be at least 3. So that's either 3, 4 or 3, 5. And this is either 7 or 8 as a result. What about over here? Well, unfortunately, this can now be 8 or 9. And there could be a 3 on the arrow, but it could also be a 4, 5 arrow. So that's a bit less sure. Oh, look, I've got an 8 looking at this 7 or 8. Sorry, so that's a 7. And in fact, we now know this is a 3-4 pair. That's not a 7. Now we know this is a 6-9 pair. So this becomes a 7. We need two 7s in the blue circle, so that's a 7. These other two are 6 and 9 in some order. Right, this 7 has 1, 2, 4 on it. That gives us a 3 here. We can fill in the small numbers in the top row. That is a 5-8 pair. Ooh, might come back to this arrow in a moment. 8 looks like a big number there now. 6-4-7 here. So that's a 2. This is a 9. We know that makes this a 6. So I'll come up here. We'll fill in 1-2-3 there. This is not a 6-9 pair. This is obviously 7-8 now. 5-9 pair in the box there. We get 3-6-8 as a triple down here. This obviously can't be 8. So it's either 3, 4, making 7, or 6, 1. That can't be a 7. So the other side is also 3, 4, or 6, 1. So 5 and 9 go in these cells, obviously, because this is a 1, 2, 4 triple. Now, we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4 quad in column 2. So that's 5 or 6. And this can't be 5 or 6 anymore. Uh, I don't know what that means. 
Right, this 9 is made up of 1, 3, 5. Now I've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 qu uh, quint in column 5. So this has to be a 6. It can't be 9 because of that. Um, this is a 5, 8 pair, so that's not a 5. That's not a 7. Six. So six is in one of these cells and one of these. Now, I was going to have a look at this middle box again. So the absolute maximum with a nine here is, and I'm talking about the maximum for this whole area, including these two cells outside the arrow. So nine, 27, and then... 8 and 7 is 15, doubled is 30, so we're up to 57. So the most these two can add up to is 12. If this becomes an 8, oh, then one of these can be a 9. So uh, that only comes down to 11, I suppose, then. It's actually quite interesting. They can't add up to 12. Is that right? This is a 9. They have to add up to 12, but I don't think those two can. No, they can't. So I think that means this is not a 9. Could it be a 6, though? Otherwise, it's going to have to be an 8. Um, so these would add up to 18. Oh, but these have some freedom. They could be 9 and 8, 17, 34, 52. Those would add up to 7. Okay, let me check my maths here. Uh, there might be a simpler way of getting at this, and I, I apologize if there is, but I'm kind of fixated on this way now. Actually, let's just have a quick look at what this cell cannot be. It can't be seven. It can't be three or four, because that's a pair. It can't be five. So it is one, two, six, eight, or nine. Now, it can't be one or two because of this or that. Um, I'm going to say it couldn't be six, but actually five, one, three, three would work as far as I can see at the moment. So let's do the maths again. If this is a nine, and we've got 27. Ah, yes, of course, these don't have to be 8, 7. They could be 8, 6. So those don't have to add up to 12. They could add up to something smaller, 10 or 8, which could be 5 and 3. Okay, so this is not the right way to go about it. Okay, finally understood that. Let's look at this 1, 2, 3, 4, triple instead. We've got, that can't be a 6. Yes, where does 7 go in this column? Can't be there because of a one two seven, so it's up here. That's a much more straightforward way of going about things. Um, eight now has to be in one of these two cells. Um, let's separate the five nine seven one two three four. That is fine. Right, yes. Where does six go in column two as well? Oops. Six, that's the only candidate cell. And that's very helpful because that now needs this to be a three and that to be a nine to exist at all. So this central one isn't a nine, not for the reasons I was trying to prove, but because it's become impossible thanks to this arrow here. Now we can finish off five and eight in the column. This is now a five, four pair. And there's a 5-8 pair. So 5 is in one of these two cells in row 5. That can't be a 9. In fact, we've got a 1. Oh, this has become a 4, isn't it? Thanks to that. 3. So we get a 3 there. We know where 3 is on the 9 arrow. This becomes a 1. That looks across here and places a 1 there. We can do the two and three as a result. This is a one. Uh, 
Uh, we've got a two, four pair there. That one sorts out the five, one pair over this side. That can't be a seven, so we know where seven is in this triple. Are either of these sorted? No, not yet, but that can't be a three now. Ooh, and this has got quite high. Right, six or eight on an arrow with six or eight in the circle. I think we know how that has to go. And that means we can do the rest. And there we go. So eight, three, two. Now, they add up to 15. These other cells in the box must add up to 30. So the two circles add up to 15. Oh, no. Right. I think I made those add up to 15. And I'm re-looking really at them now. I'm going to add up to 13, which is the biggest relief in maths for me. They add up to 30. These two add up to 32. So these two cells add up to 16. <sighs> I thought it was 15 and I thought it was impossible. Right. They are 9 and 7. So I presume the 9 is 5, 4 and the 7 is 1, 6. I don't know which way around they go. This is now a 5, 6 pair. This is a 1, 4 pair. Still going to have to resolve which way round they go. Ah, oh, but that eight is looking across here. Five, eight, five, four. That fixes the one four I've just found in the middle. And therefore, five plus four is nine. Oh, hang on. I've put four in both places. Right, this one should have been a one. One plus six equals seven. There we go. Battling my own typos here and maths idiocy but there we go we're making decent progress now 217 right this is all resolved at the bottom three there gives us a four one six four that fixes the two four pair yes i can fix with that five i can fix the five nine pair and this two four pair has been resolved for a while by that too and now we've just got four triples to fill in, and we are suddenly done. So four there, and a three nine pair. Eight there, and a six seven pair. Uh, nine two eight. Three five and six goes six three five. And we can finish off, and that is a very clever puzzle. With an intriguing bit of set theory in the in the yellow and blue stuff. Really interesting. Um, I don't know, and that is clearly the, the real break in this five was just a little bit of sugar to start with. But um, the the real break in probably I could have figured out that was a seven just from the set theory without narrowing it down by the parity stuff at the beginning. But really entertaining, very clever. I, I'm sure that seven in the title relates to finding this seven down here to get started. Although, frankly, there was still quite a bit of work to do. The realisation there was only one nine or eight anywhere in the yellow was actually huge. And this eight was a very cunning given digit. It did a lot of work. Brilliant puzzle. Really entertaining. Thank you, um, Simon, for sending it my way. Thank you, Zombie Hunter, for sending it in. Thank you to you for watching the channel and for all that you do for us. Um, delighted to be able to bring that one to you. I hope you had a go at it. Hope to see you again on the channel next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.